reflect on the spring practice today and what you saw from the guys and anything in particular? Tons of energy, uh, tons of energy, big time communication. Uh, you can tell those guys are anxious and excited to be back out on the field uh, legally with balls and uh, with coaches getting a chance to evaluate. Uh, but I, it just tons of excitement out there, man. And uh, uh, the guys definitely flew around, you know, a few guys really stood out out there. Yeah, what what has it been like for you over the last couple of weeks, you know, talking with the guys and taking over as the interim head coach? And what have you said to them exactly as uh, spring practice has commenced? Basically, you know, we just want to continue operation. Uh, uh, ben is still downstairs. His staff is doing a great job with those guys in the, in the weight room. And upstairs, uh, we, we pretty much just been meeting on our normal basis as far as just trying to be great on the offensive side and on the defensive side, all together, all on the same page and delivering that same message to the squad. And uh, it's been awesome in the classroom with those guys also too. I think that's the way, that's one of the reasons why practice flowed the way it flowed today. You know, those guys been doing a great job in the classroom as far as listening. Okay, we'll go to Scott Jason with 247 Sports. Go ahead, Scott. Hey coach, how you doing? Doing well, Scott, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Hey, this is the first time we're getting to talk to you, obviously. So I wanted to just back up and ask you about being the interim coach. It looked like you had a lot of the support from the players. What, what did it mean to you to be named interim coach? And I guess what, what was kind of maybe the first 24 hours like for you when, when you got that call or you, you were informed of that? Uh, to be honest, which is like a dream come true. You know, you never really saw it coming. Uh, I didn't really come to Kansas to, you know, be the head coach at Kansas. I just came to be the best position coach and the best co-worker as possible. Uh, as far as the guys uh, standing behind me, you know, it just speaks volumes on the staff. We're doing a great job as far as uh, building that family base and, and, and building that, that relationship well with our, with our players. So uh, they wanted someone that they knew well and trusted to represent them as we continue to move forward through our spring and uh, next season also too. Is it been difficult at all, just maybe the uncertainty of not knowing what's going to happen with the AD, what happens after that, or how do you kind of deal with with maybe some of those questions you might still have? Shoot, I just take it one day at a time, just try to be great one day at a time. That's all I worry about. You know, everything else is pretty much out of our control. You know, the good Lord up above, he, he'll make the final decision. Uh, so as long as we come in and pour into these kids and, and make sure we're on the same page as the staff, we'll be fine. I don't really focus on that. Yeah, for sure. And then just last thing for me real quick, uh, in terms of communication with other coaches, um, are you still working mostly with wide receivers? Are you working more big picture with offense, working with everyone? How's that all kind of working for you? Uh, you know, when I get time to work with those guys, uh, it's, it's hard for me to put those guys down, you know, so uh, I still meet with them in the classroom. Uh, when I get fundamental times doing practice, I still uh, spend that time with those guys and pour into them. And I still, I have two other assistants with me also too. So if I need to branch off and, and go uh, and, and monitor another drill or another position group, I can do that also too. But as far as touching those guys every day, that's, that's like my baby right there. So it's hard to let that go. Okay, we'll go next to Benton Smith with the Journal World. Go ahead, Benton. Hey, Emmett, how are you? Doing well, how you doing, Ben? Good, man, thanks. Hey, uh, what, what was it like just leading the team at a, at a practice for the first time today? What, what are you gonna remember about that? To be honest with you, I feel like I've been down this road before. Uh, I just let natural leadership abilities just kick in. I didn't try to do nothing different. Uh, I just tried to be myself. Uh, we all look at it, at ourselves as head coaches anyway within our group. So uh, down down it's just a broader our, our, this is from a broader perspective now, not just a wide house, it's the whole squad now. So you're just delivering that overall message to the whole squad. So there's nothing really different. But uh, it's been a special feeling being in front of those guys, those, you know, so try to maximize it. Have, have you run into uh, any maybe unexpected challenges just because, you know, now you're kind of, you kind of got more on your plate than, than you used to? I mean, you know, you, when you've been in this uh, position before, you know, there's going to be some things come up, you know, but when you got good uh, people in place, you know, uh, from the administration, you know, from your support staff, your ops, you know, everything is all hand in hand and all is well taken care of. So uh, operations pretty much been smooth, uh, to be honest with you. What, what have you been told about maybe how long you will be in this this interim role? What What's kind of your your knowledge of the situation? I don't even like to ask. I, don't, I try not to ask. I, I don't want guys to come ask me questions about it. I don't want none of it about it. All I want to know is uh, what do we have up next, the next hour, when this position means, what are the guys doing? Are the guys in study hall? Are they being respectful across campus? That's all I really worry about as far as just the operation with the program. I don't even think about that question. 
Um, one more real quick for me. I just want to ask you about the, the offense. Obviously, you know, Mike DeBoard is here as the OC now. What what looks different about the offense now that someone else is in charge? Uh, you know, we our background is kind of similar a little bit. You know, uh, I kind of introduced some principles to him as far as some stuff that I know. Uh, we kind of came together as, as a unit. And it is not, it's not just Coach DeBoard either. You know, we have a good group of guys. Uh, so we're trying to run that offensive side like it's a, it's a strong corporation. You know, you have Coach Ergo, he have a strong background. You have Coach Grimes, he have a strong background with what he do. Then Coach Bo DeBoer bring his strength to the table. And then from some stuff that I work, that I know and I'm fami familiarized with, we kind of just merged that stuff together and simplified it and, and, and made it easy where it's possible to teach to the kids where there won't be too much thinking. Uh, and made it very QB friendly for the offense, you know? So right now we're just focused on our base installs, trying to get those installed to the kids and talk well, because this offense is built just to, to a never ending room to grow, but you got to perfect the, the base uh, installs. Okay, we'll go next to Sam Lance. Go ahead, Sam. Hey coach, Sam Lance with the University Daily Kansan. Just following up kind of on that player support, uh, how have you kind of reacted to that? And do you think you can create a positive culture change here? For sure. You know, that's that's what I'm about. You know, uh, treating people right. Then, you know, that's, that's how we pe preach is treating people right. And that's how you get your blessings. You know, want to be likable across the campus. That's all we stress, being likable in the facility, likable in the dorms, likable in the dining hall, likable, this period uh, across the uh, city of Lawrence. You know, so that, that's really what we're about. That's, that's one of the core principles of our foundation right now. So um, that's an ongoing process as far as those kids will hear that from multiple angles, not just from the coaching staff, it's the support staff, the admin in the building, you know, so they just hearing it, you know, so you hear it so much and, and, you, and then you, they, they look up to us also at the same time. So if they see us living that message that we preach, they just follow our lead. And just following up on that with everything that happened with Les and then of course, Jeff Long, how important do you think it is for you guys to show an improved product on the field this season? Uh, we just stay in the course. Uh, if nothing didn't happen, you know, we, you know, the, the mission was just to show improvement regardless, you know, so uh, you know, nothing, nothing has tapered away from that at all. You know, we just stay in the course. Matter of fact, kind of amplifying some stuff a little bit more. You know, these kids, they ready to go. You know, they feel like they got a point to prove. Same with these coaching staff. Can't do nothing by myself. I got some good, good group of guys with me uh, all the way around. So we just stand the course and uh, being all on the same page. You know, one thing we always talk about is, you know, together, you know, it, it'd be difficult for anybody to slow us down, but we got to make sure we are together with this. And that's what we've been displaying the last two to three weeks. Thank you. We'll go to John Kirby with Rivals. Go ahead, John. Hi, Coach. How you doing? Doing well, John. How you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks. Hey, I got a question. So with you losing a guy on staff, have you promoted anybody up on that area? Well, we have. You know, I've been here going on my third season. Uh, have some bright minds in the building. Uh, and the good Lord work in mysterious ways. You know, a uh, good program. You know, sometimes you really don't have to reach out and try to find someone uh, to add on to your family, you know, if, if you're living right and, and, and you're teaching each other, right. And, and you all on the same page, you know, you can just pick the pecking order comes from the facility. Uh, we have Travis Partridge here with us right now. You know, that guy's probably one of the best QB minds I've been around. I've been around some good ones. So it's, it's fortunate to have him around. Uh, so really with those quarterbacks, for the most part, we have, we have two sets of eyes on those quarterbacks to so coach the board and his leadership from where he been as, as a coach working with Tom Brady, uh, Josh Dobbs, and you got Travis Parcher. Travis Parcher's a little bit more hands-on, uh, very smart, cerebral guy. So we just all come together and uh, uh, make sure those quarterbacks is showing ample amount of improvement and all on the same page, you know. So uh, excited about him being in that role, and, and, and I'm, I'm thankful that he get an opportunity to show what he has as a full-time coach. And I had one more question. I saw Takobe Williams was going to safety, which gives you a lot of young receivers. How excited are you to mentor that young group? Uh, very excited. You know, he he went to safety. Uh, that's something that that we decided on at the end of the season. Uh, he wanted to do it. You know, I'm all for him. I always tell him, hey, man, we got a home for you. You know, if something don't work out for you, you got a home back on the offensive side, we can get you the ball. Uh, but, you know, he, he he's going to full-time safety, and that gave us a chance to get uh, Jordan Medlock, you know, uh, at, at, at full-time wide receiver. So it was just like a swap, you know? So, you know, those guys got strong on the defensive side. We got strong and bigger. Uh, 
on the uh on the on the wide receiver side. I'm sorry, Jordan Metlin, not Metlock, Jordan Metlin. So we got stronger at the wide receiver position. So it all worked out well. You know, once again, the good Lord worked in mysterious ways. All right, we'll go to Matt Fortuna with the Athletic. Go ahead, Matt. Hi, Coach. Good to see you. Um, hey, given your, how you doing? Your, doing well, thank you. Given your day-to-day, keep your head down philosophy with, with everything going on right now, what's your MO for this team this spring? What do you hope to do, accomplish through the next 15 practices, and where do you guys right. hope to be next month? Right now, we, you know, we, we're just trying to make sure that, that we improve on a day-to-day basis and instill confidence and belief and togetherness. Uh, you know, we just, you know, we – doing our best to, to, to change the perception, change the image of the program, you know, and, and I'll start with hard work. You know, all these guys are division one football players. All these guys were recruited majority of them on full-time scholarships. So even if some of the walk-ons, walk on some of our best players. So uh, we all come together and, you know, and, and, and do what we're supposed to do within the program. And, you know, we put these guys in a, in, in a position to be successful as a staff and these guys, buy into the program and buy into the system that we installing with these guys. And they've been showing buy in. They are very excited with it. Um, I, you know, I, I'll plan next year. You know, if you don't speak it, it won't happen. You know, we, we want to continue and, and, and be in contention in December. You know, we just don't want just to go through the schedule, just a normal game. You know, we want to be in contention. You know, we feel like we have uh, the pieces that we need and, and we are very fired up about it. And then just, I imagine today was almost like a welcome reprieve for you to get back on the field coaching these guys. How much did your life change the last two, three weeks, however long it's been uh, since you've had this title, like the off the field stuff? Well, you know, you get, uh, only thing really changed for me, you know, you get so many high school coaches that, that inquire about, you know, uh, possible opportunity to coach on the next level. You know, I had to remind those guys, and when I was a high school coach, I never, that never was my MO. You know, I just wanted to be the best at my current job and everything else will take care of itself. Uh, so the, the main deal is, is I get tons of text messages for us, congratulations, uh, um, you know, the phone constantly ringing. Uh, other than that, you know, it, it's, it's really normal operation for Coach Jones. You know, just I get more text messages and uh, get, you know, a few calls from a few Big 12 head coaches also too, you know, showing support and giving uh, some strong advice also too. But other than that, you know, it, it's just normal operation. I'm a low key guy once I leave the facility. I'm just with the family, uh, probably watching YouTube or, you know, watching some on the Discovery Channel, just in my own little zone. I got my, get myself focused to get back to work the next morning. All right, we'll go to Jesse Newell with the Kansas City Star. Go ahead, Jesse. Hey, and I want to ask first, uh, last week you added to your QB room. Can you just discuss where you guys are at with that position and the addition you had? Uh, right now, it, it's, it's an all-out race. You know, you got seven guys out there competing. Uh, in the, in the, in today's show, shown that uh, uh, those guys been, you know, handling the coaching well from the board, coach the board and coach Partridge as far as being great students in the classroom. Now, uh, the bullets are flying around a little bit out there. You know, they, they send D linemen come out there a little bit. Look, they send Mike Backers drop or, or some type of stunt, you know. Uh, but for the most part, those guys, they're competing. You know, I thought they did a decent job today. Uh, some on flash that didn't different times, you know, so, you know, uh, it, the, the objective is to get better each day, you know, but we definitely saw some things that we like out, out of a few of those guys, you know, everything is being documented with those guys. Uh, it's, it's a full tilt race, you know, with the guys we have on campus. So that's how we're really focusing on these guys that we have on campus at KU right now, trying to get those guys ready to play uh, come next season. And if you can comment on Jason, I'm not sure if he's signed yet or not, but if you can, just can you discuss wanting to bring him into that race next uh, for the summer? I wish I could come in on it, but I can't make any come in on it right now. Okay, perfect. I wasn't sure about that. Um, the last thing I wanted to ask about was you mentioned the togetherness. You guys had a couple really good recruiting classes these last few years of high school kids. And with all of the turnover uh, and the coaching staff things that have happened, how important is it to try to keep those pieces to uh, to try to build something that you're talking about? You know, that's just unification from the staff. You know, we it's not we we really don't sell too much. Uh, there's no sales pitch and nothing like that. We just speak the vision, the blueprint, and togetherness and family atmosphere uh, that we have in this facility. We talk about the last two classes we signed. They've been all high school players, all uh, good quality kids. So we're just trying to each year we want to get better with the classes we sign on and off the field in the classroom. And uh, guys is used to winning. You know, guys that come from strong. Uh, programs uh, used to working hard and uh, guys that want, you know, they want to be a part of the change here at KU. So that's really like a lot of the stuff that we talk about, you know, just coming in and uh, being one of the best program, being one of the best teams, being a part of one of the best teams uh, that the University of Kansas has ever put on the football field. 
Okay, thanks everyone. We'll be back here uh, in a minute with a couple of players.